Oh, Carlin's back in town. The truckers are outside. You can hear them in the background. Parliamentarians, they have all their speeches. They are polished. It's outstanding. Member for Carlton. Just because the Prime Minister dressed up in racist costumes so many times, he can't remember them all. Doesn't mean every single Liberal is a racist. Just because the Prime Minister had tried to help a corporation avoid prosecution after it stole from some of Africa's poorest people, doesn't mean all Liberals are racist. Just because about a half dozen Liberal MPs who are racial minorities have complained about his treatment of them does not mean that all Liberals are racist. That is guilt by association. Why doesn't the Prime Minister opt instead for personal responsibility? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, uh, I hope that I've been clear in all of my comments that I respect the honourable colleagues on the other side, just as I believe they respect the colleagues that are on this side and the work that we do and the people that we are. There are times in our political discourse where we see things that are abhorrent, and all I would ask is that we equally call it out. When I saw swastikas on the street, when I saw what had happened, it's time to move on. And what I would ask is instead of trying to inflame the situation, let us de-escalate the situation. Let us work together to find a way to stop the lockdown that is happening of this city and so that citizens can move forward with their lives and any legitimate grievances can be fairly heard. The Honourable Member for Carleton. Well, Mr. Speaker, I agree. We should always call out evil symbols and the individuals who are individually responsible for putting them up. I remember a January 18th, January 2018 event where the Prime Minister stared straight at a swastika and instead of condemning it, said, thank you for coming, sir. We on this side condemn evil symbols whenever they are used. I do respect that member. I just wish his government would respect the thousands of people here, here. who are fighting for their livelihoods right now here, here. who are trying to do the best to get this country here, here. back on track. Here, here. The Honourable Government House Leader. We are in a time of global crisis, uh, a time when so many are being uh, adversely affected by this pandemic, and our hearts go out to every one of them. The way in which we have discourse for each other will define this moment for all of us. And to those that are peacefully protesting, I would ask that their point has been made. It's time to go home and do it a different way. That continuing to lock down this city and continuing to do what's happening, it is deeply disturbing for Canadians to see the way that this city and our symbols are being treated. And I would ask the Conservatives to also join with us to ask that they go home and let's do this responsibly. Let's have responsible dialogue. I respect the member opposite. Let's do this the right way. The Honourable Member for Colton. Well, the problem is they've, no, they've shown no respect for the people. This country right now is like a raw nerve and the Prime Minister is jumping up and down on it again and again with his inflammatory record, r- rhetoric. We're talking about people who have 14-year-old kids that are suicidal after two years of lockdowns. I just spoke to a waitress whose business was wiped out by lockdowns. I'm talking to, to truckers who've been, who've been serving food on our, ta- our plates throughout this and these are the very people, honest, hard-working, shirt-off-your-back type of people that this Prime Minister keeps attacking. The Honourable Government House Leader. We'll wait to start the time. Okay, very good. Please go. Mr. Speaker, again, I I encourage the member um, to to just think about if if he's talking about de-escalating and having civil discourse, uh, his tone and how he's approaching this issue. This is a time that is incredibly delicate. We are in a moment where there is a raw nerve that is being touched. How we talk to each other, Mr. Speaker, how we deal with one another. I, I'm going to interrupt the Honourable Government House Leader and just wait till everything calms down a moment and then I'll let him start from the top because I'm sorry, I didn't have a chance to hear it all and I'm sure the Honourable Member from Carleton asked a question he wanted to answer to and he wants, wants to hear it and we're just not hearing anything because of the noise. The Honourable Government House Leader, please proceed. I have have an instinct, and that instinct is that Canadians expect us 
today when they're seeing what's happened over this weekend to watch the dialogue in this chamber be as respectful as possible That's for us great. to dial down Absolutely. our rhetoric and our language for us to engage in one another and find an off ramp from the escalation that has occurred because this is not healthy. In a healthy democracy, we have respectful debates that don't involve some of the things that we've seen. And all I'm asking for is for us to engage in a constructive way. So if we could attempt in this place, in this hour, to be equal to that, I hope that we can move forward on that basis. Yes, yes. Well, Member for Carlton. Well, I couldn't agree more. And Mr. Speaker, I was out at an overpass as the truckers went by. And what I saw were cheerful, patriotic, optimistic Canadians who want their freedom back and want their livelihoods back. And they're standing up for their fellow Canadians, the 60% of families who fear they can't feed themselves. The 28-year-old kid living in mom's basement because he can't afford a home. The small businessman wiped out by endless lockdowns by incompetent politicians. These are the people that are standing up and fighting for their livelihoods and their freedom. Why won't the government finally stand with them? difference. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have a fundamental difference, and that is that I don't believe that my enemy is across the aisle. I believe that our... Well, MP Bergen, not to be outdone by Pierre Poliver, uh, has some pretty uh, choice words, and just, just, just an outstanding MP, speaking for the people out of Manitoba. Watch this one. For humanitarian and development, as, as Just as Mr. Speaker, I could not agree more with with the member that uh, all of us in the world needs to be vaccinated for the, uh, for all of us to be safe. Thank you. The honourable member for Portage Lisker. Mr. Speaker, all Canadians want to see a leader who will work to heal rifts, not further divide. A leader who will listen, even to those voices he might not agree with. A leader who will work to understand, not dismiss, name call and gaslight. Contrary to some, there are thousands of passionate, patriotic and peaceful Canadians on the Hill right now who just want to be heard. Will the Prime Minister extend an olive branch and will he listen? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, I think we all uh, support free speech in this House, but there's a big difference between free speech and inciting hatred, inciting violence, desecrating war memorials, Mr. Speaker. And I would hope my Honourable colleague would denounce that in the clearest terms, Mr. Speaker. Those radical leaders are not really interested in free speech because they want to pretend as those vaccines don't work. On this side of the House, we know vaccines work. That's the gateway to freedom. And this government will do everything that we can to get there. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Portage Lisker. Of course, we all condemn hateful and destructive acts by a few at any protest. Whether it's beheading the statue of Queen Victoria in Manitoba, tearing down the statue of Sir John A. in Montreal, or putting flags on Terry Fox, whether it's burning churches, whether it's wearing blackface, whether it's Hezbollah flags or Nazi flags, we all condemn it. But I'm not talking about that, Mr. Speaker. You might want to stay down. You might want to stay down. The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, let's be abundantly clear that those individuals who've called for the incitement of violence to overthrow this government who have caused significant disruption by flagrantly ignoring public health care measures that have forced shops and businesses to close, that have desecrated war memorials, are not interested in free speech, they're not interested in discourse, and they're certainly not interested in advancing our way out of this pandemic, Mr. Speaker. This government will always listen to those who want to have a robust debate about public health care measures, but we have to draw a bright line between those who are interested in that debate and those who are not. Well, that, that minister is not telling the truth, and it's shameful to see what he is doing. Accusing Canadians of being... Order, order, order. I think both sides are very truthful in saying what they say. Whether they agree with it or not is something that is another story. But calling someone who's... Tell, well, basically, t- calling them... A name or accusing them of something is not permitted in the House. I'll let the Honourable Member for Portage Lister start from the top, and I'm sure she'll ask the question uh, correctly. 
Mr. Speaker, and I apologize that that minister is misleading Canadians. I do get very defensive of Canadians who are outside today, patriotic, peace-loving Canadians who are called misogynists and racist by the Prime Minister. Black so again, I will ask the Prime Minister, who may I remind this House wore blackface yeah. on more times than he can remember, apologize to the peace-loving, patriotic Canadians who are outside right now just asking to be heard. <laughs> will he speak to them? A diplomatic solution unlikely, and a Russian invasion of Ukraine is now imminent. Great question. The Honourable Minister of Foreign Affairs. Obviously, we take the threat of a further Russian invasion very seriously. And that's why there are two paths to stop to stop Russia to further invade Ukraine. The first one is the diplomatic one, and that's why we're waiting we're working sorry, with NATO, US and Normandy format, which is France and Germany. But also, we're working on deterrence. That's why also we extended and expanding, exp expanded Operation Unifier. And also, we have prepared a, an array of uh, different economic sanctions against Russia should they further invade. Thank you. November 1st, South Surrey, White Rocks. Mr. Speaker, Ukraine will likely be the scene of a large conventional ground war. We have watched this Russian military buildup in Belarus, Russia, Donbass, and Crimea since the Russian Zapad exercises last September. The government had months to prepare a robust military aid package to Ukraine. When will the Minister of Defense prove? Uh, Sorry, when will the Minister of Defense provide the lethal weapons that Ukraine needs now? The Honorable Minister. As mentioned before, uh, Mr. Speaker, we've already answered the call on the part of the Ukrainian government by expanding and extending Operation Unifier. I was there a, a week ago and met with the military, the Canadian Armed Forces on site which comes from Val Quartier right now, Quebec City. And I saw on the ground how much the National Guard is thankful to Canadians to make sure that we're providing the right support to the military and the National Guard. And we've trained more than 30,000 National Guards and Armed Forces in Ukraine since 2014. Thank you. The month of proposed solutions to the trucking shortage in Canada and the supply chain crisis, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister has ignored this crisis, and even worse, he calls names for people that are raising these very issues. So, Mr. Speaker, my question is simple. Will the Prime Minister move past the division and agree to meet with some of the truckers impacted by his federal regulations? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the science is very clear. The best way through this pandemic is to get people vaccinated. That's how we end the disruptions to our supply chains caused by this global pandemic. That's how we get back to the things we love to do. That's why we've been unequivocal on the need to get vaccinated. And great news, Canadians across the country stepped up. Almost 90% of Canadians are vaccinated. Well, what do you think? Do you think all your questions were answered? Just like my grandpa used to say. Like, subscribe, comment. Have a good day.